Alrighty guys, here, uh, just just finished the last day of snook season. We got this fat 32 inch slot. We're gonna show you guys how to fillet this up real quick. A little hot to video. So guys, your first incision is gonna be right around here behind the pec fin, follow it down. Right around the rib cage here. You're definitely gonna want a sharp knife for this. These things are pretty scaly. Flip it around, do the same thing over here. And once you pretty much went around the whole thing, you're going to be able to follow these bones down. All the way down to the backbone. We're going to do this on both sides. Oh man, this was a fat 32 inch stuff. So once you're through, you're going to be able to lift it up just like that. Be able to see right through that and kind of run your knife right here down the back, down the rib bones. And once you're about there, it's a little hard here. We don't have, you know, quite the fillet table, but making it work. You're gonna kind of run your knife down here and skin this thing just like this. So, there's one side of the filet skinned. We do have a little bit, you know, the flesh left here, but you can always clean that up in the kitchen. Alright, you guys, we're down to the second side. Pretty much follow the same procedure on this side, side of the pec fin. Down to where the ribs are. Pretty much follow it all the way back. Prepare these things are really scaly. Definitely want a sharp knife. Same thing on top. Go down. Go to the tail. And then follow on the back. You guys can see that, but we'll just follow we're able to see through. Once we're down to the back one on both sides, just get your knife and run it down there. Crush all those bones. And now your fillet is free. Then left with that fillet there, left with some rib bones and back bones on here. Oh. I'll cut these bones out. You want to try to save as much meat as you can. And there are the bones right there. What I like to do is just run the blade down the backbone here. One little thing eliminates the bloodline also, so you're not getting any fishy taste or anything. So there's one side, same thing right there along the other side. Actually, I missed a few right here. Yep, that's your center bloodline there, along with 
few back bones and a few rib bones we missed. And that pretty much sums it up. Cut them whatever size you're going to want to serve them. You can always cut them smaller and whatever you end up doing, whether it's tacos, fish fingers, chop them up in the kitchen. Like I said, that about sums it up. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, do yourself a favor, subscribe. If you'd like to see more how-to videos or if you want to just check out all the videos I produce. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, guys, and that's your finished product right there. Laid nice. We didn't waste any meat. Our skin's attached. No meat on our skin. Just real hefty healthy fat 32 inch slip right there. All right, what's going on guys? Uh, you saw Chris fillet the snook. We're gonna cook some up now. I like to use uh, canola or vegetable oil. Olive oil is a little too thick for me. I don't like my fish really greasy. So we got some oil. I do like half oil, half butter. We're gonna fry half of it and then pan sear some of it. Alright, so over here, you got the snook fillets, nice white meat, I'm going to go ahead and season those, could use some uh, garlic powder, some sea salt, oregano leaves, onion powder, and lemon pepper. Give all the fillets a nice healthy serving of each seasoning. Snook really doesn't need too much seasoning because the meat is so delicious, but... Now once you have your fish seasoned, we're going to go ahead and toss it in a egg bath. And then some uh, Italian breadcrumbs. Make sure you get that nice and coated. Go ahead and set that in there. Sure does smell good. Now when you're frying it, you're going to want to just cook it until the you see the bottom get nice and brown and crunchy. Just about two, three minutes on each side. How long is it going to take? Alright guys, so the uh, the pan suit snook actually cooks a little quicker. It doesn't have to go through the breadcrumbs or anything. So you're going to keep an eye on that. When I fry the fish, I like to do a little lower heat. So all that flavor stays in and it's nice and juicy and tender. We got a lot of hungry people. <laughs> yeah, look, they're waiting in line. The food's not even ready yet. I need food. I need food. This is the finished product of the fried fish, and that's the uh, pan seared.